Hey there, my name's Daniel White. Some people online know me as Dansky. I'm a designer and instructor with Envato Tuts Plus. And in this course, we're going to learn all about creatively compositing images in Adobe Photoshop. So what is compositing? Well, compositing is the process whereby you combine one image with another, or it can be more than one image, but essentially it's all about combining multiple images together into a single image. And this is incredibly fun because it allows you to imagine like a scene, something completely out of this world, and then you can bring that to life all in Photoshop. And in this course, you're going to learn a number of different tricks and tips that is not only going to make your process of compositing images easier, but it's also going to make the end result look a lot more effective. So in this course, we're going to be taking an image of a robot and compositing that with another image of an industrial setting. And before we kick off the course, if you'd like to download a ton of creative assets that you can use to create your own unique composites, then definitely check out Envato Elements. Literally just one subscription gets you access to like over a million assets across a wide variety of categories. So if you'd like to follow along with this course and links to download the robot, the industrial image, and any brushes that we use from Envato Elements will be provided with the course. And the assets that we're using in this course are literally a handful of over like a million assets that are included as part of a subscription. Okay, so with all that said, I think it's time to get started. Okie dokie, so we're now in Photoshop. I have a new document. I've created a canvas that is 1920 by 1080 pixels. This is what we're going to be working with. But first of all, well, we need some images. So we're gonna jump over to Envato Elements. Remember that the links to download the images that you'll see are provided with the course. So we have the industrial setting here. So we can sign in, download, there we go, we'll get that one. And if I switch over to the other tab, you can see we have a robot here. Now this is listed under the 3D category. And the great thing about these 3D assets is you can spin the camera around and download what you want at a specific angle. It's incredibly useful if you're looking to like take an image of a, a robot, like in this example, and match it with your scene. So I can click here, view 3D render, Elements does its thing, and now I can click and drag and rotate this around. So I'm going for something like, oh, that looks, that looks pretty cool, pretty menacing, but we're gonna go with something like this. Now you can download it as a PNG. Essentially it will have transparency and it will include the shadows, but if you want a layered PSD where you can turn the shadows on, off, and a few other things, then I would definitely recommend checking PSD, and then you can download that at this specific angle. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded these images. Let's just switch over here. So we've got the industrial image and the robot. And if they're packaged inside a zip folder, just double click the zip folder. If you're on Mac, it will extract the files. If you're on PC, just drag the files out of the zip folder onto your desktop. And once you've got them, we're ready to open these in Photoshop. So we could right click and go open with, or we could just drag these down here. Or if you're on a PC, go to File and Open. And you can do that on a Mac as well. So there's multiple ways to get these images in. So you can see we have our robot at our desired angle. We have this subject flat layer. We can turn that off and on. And the beauty of this is we also have shadows. So I'm going to keep the shadows because they could be pretty useful. So I'm going to hold Shift and select both of these layers. Right click, go to Duplicate Layers. And I'm going to select the document as my PSD. Click OK, and I can see that they are now in here. So next we need the background. We have our industrial setting. So let's just go to select an all, and then go edit and copy. Because this is a JPEG, a flat image, it will just copy everything that's selected with the marching ants. Jump over here, we'll click on our background layer, go to edit and paste. If you do paste this above, the subject layer like this by mistake, it definitely happens. Just drag that underneath. Now I can actually get rid of the background layer by pressing delete or backspace on the keyboard. We don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna call this layer scene. And I'm just going to name this robot. So I'm just double clicking on the text to rename. We've got shadows as well. Okay, so we've got our robot, we've got some shadows, we've got the scene. Now we need to kind of like group everything together because as we create these composites, they can get pretty complicated. So uh, just naming your layers, organizing your folders from the beginning is good practice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift, select both of these layers, right click, and I'm going to select group 
from layers. And we can give this group a name. So I'll call this robot. And then I've got the scene down here. Now at the moment, the scene is a JPEG, so it's not a smart object. And then what we want to do is we want to convert most of what we bring into Photoshop into a smart object. The reason we do this is because smart objects enable us to add things like effects and filters as smart filters. We get a lot more flexibility. We can edit effects that we apply later on in the course and we can delete them as well. If you don't use smart objects, then uh, any effects and things you apply, they're permanent. The only way to get rid of them is to go edit, undo, undo, undo. And we don't want to do that. So we're going to work a little bit smarter so we can right click this scene as soon as we've pasted it in and go convert to smart object. Now what this does is kind of create a snapshot of this image at this size. So if I just zoom out, you can see it's quite a large image. We'll go to edit and free transform. And because it's a smart object, it remembers all the data of this image at its native size. So if I scale it down, back up, back down, back up, it's not going to lose any quality. Whereas if it's a JPEG, you scale it down small and you bring it back up again um, and it's not a smart object, guess what? We're going to get pixelation. So this is a great way to avoid that. So I'm just scaling this down with the free transform option and I can double click or press return to set that. There we go. My scene looks a, a pretty good size now, I think. And we have our robot. So now I'm just going to create a new folder from the bottom of the layers panel. And I'm going to call this scene. Nope, let's <laughs> spell that correctly. Scene, there we go. And I'm going to drag my scene image into the scene. And I'm going to create one more folder now. And I'm going to call this effects. This is where we're going to apply some dramatic lighting effects and everything towards the end. And we'll pop that up there. So that's how I like to structure my composites. I have the scene, I have the subject or any subjects. Sometimes I'll have like an objects layer as well, other things that might be there that don't really fit into any category. And then I've got the effects right at the top. Okay, so we're nearly done setting this up. The only other thing I'm going to do now is select the robot and the shadows and do the same thing again that we did to the background. Go to edit, free transform. We'll just zoom out a little bit and I'm going to hold shift and scale this down. And I'm just going to try and position this roughly where I would like it to be. So something like this, and you can see those shadows underneath look pretty cool as well. You can turn those off and on. So they help everything just seem a little bit more believable. But um, there we go. So that's the end of the first lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at adjusting levels, lighting and color balance. And yeah, so I'll see you in the next lesson. Okie dokie, so we're now in Photoshop. I have a new document. I've created a canvas that is 1920 by 1080 pixels. This is what we're going to be working with. But first of all, well, we need some images. So we're going to jump over to Envato Elements. Remember that the links to download the images that you'll see are provided with the course. So we have the industrial setting here. So we can sign in, download. There we go, we'll get that one. And if I switch over to the other tab, you can see we have a robot here. Now this is listed under the 3D category. And the great thing about these 3D assets is you can spin the camera around and download what you want at a specific angle. It's incredibly useful if you're looking to like take an image of a, a robot, like in this example, and match it with your scene. So I can click here, view 3D render. Elements does its thing. And now I can click and drag and rotate this around. So I'm going for something like, oh, that looks, that looks pretty cool, pretty menacing, but we're gonna go with something like this. Now you can download it as a PNG. Essentially it will have transparency and it will include the shadows, but if you want a layered PSD where you can turn the shadows on, off, and a few other things, then I would definitely recommend checking PSD and then you can download that at this specific angle. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded these images. Let's just switch over here. So we've got the industrial image and the robot. And if they're packaged inside a zip folder, just double click the zip folder. If you're on Mac, it will extract the files. If you're on PC, just drag the files out of the zip folder onto your desktop. And once you've got them, we're ready to open these in Photoshop. So we could right click and go open with, or we could just drag these down here. Or if you're on a PC, go to file and open. And you can do that on a Mac as well. So there's multiple ways to get these images in. 
So you can see we have our robot at our desired angle. We have this subject flat layer, we can turn that off and on. And the beauty of this is we also have shadows. So I'm gonna keep the shadows because they could be pretty useful. So I'm gonna hold shift and select both of these layers, right click, go to duplicate layers, and I'm gonna select the document as my PSD. Click OK, and I can see that they are now in here. So next we need the background, we have our industrial setting. So let's just go to select an all, and then go edit and copy. Because this is a JPEG, a flat image, it will just copy everything that's selected with the marching ants. Jump over here, we'll click on our background layer, go to edit and paste. If you do paste this above the subject layer like this by mistake, it definitely happens, just drag that underneath. Now I can actually get rid of the background layer by pressing delete or backspace on the keyboard. We don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna call this layer scene. And I'm just going to name this robot. So I'm just double clicking on the text to rename. We've got shadows as well. Okay, so we've got our robot, we've got some shadows, we've got the scene. Now we need to kind of like group everything together because as we create these composites, they can get pretty complicated. So uh, just naming your layers, organizing your folders from the beginning is good practice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift, select both of these layers, right click, and I'm going to select group from layers. And we can give this group a name. So I'll call this robot. And then I've got the scene down here. Now at the moment, the scene is a JPEG, so it's not a smart object. And then what we wanna do is we want to convert most of what we bring into Photoshop into a smart object. The reason we do this is because smart objects enable us to add things like effects and filters as smart filters. We get a lot more flexibility. We can edit effects that we apply later on in the course and we can delete them as well. If you don't use smart objects, then uh, any effects and things you apply, they're permanent. The only way to get rid of them is to go edit, undo, undo, undo. And we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna work a little bit smarter. So we can right click this scene as soon as we've pasted it in and go convert to smart object. Now what this does is kind of create a snapshot of this image at this size. So if I just zoom out, you can see it's quite a large image. We'll go to edit and free transform. And because it's a smart object, it remembers all the data of this image at its native size. So if I scale it down, back up, back down, back up, it's not gonna lose any quality. Whereas if it's a JPEG, you scale it down small and you bring it back up again, um, and it's not a smart object, guess what? We're gonna get pixelation. So this is a great way to avoid that. So I'm just scaling this down with the free transform option and I can double click or press return to set that. There we go, my scene looks a, a pretty good size now, I think. And we have our robot. So now I'm just gonna create a new folder from the bottom of the layers panel. And I'm gonna call this scene. Nope, let's <laughs> spell that correctly. Scene, there we go. And I'm gonna drag my scene image into the scene. And I'm going to create one more folder now, and I'm gonna call this effects. This is where we're going to apply some dramatic lighting effects and everything towards the end. And we'll pop that up there. So that's how I like to structure my composites. I have the scene, I have the subject or any subjects. Sometimes I'll have like an objects layer as well, other things that might be there that don't really fit into any category. And then I've got the effects right at the top. Okay, so we're nearly done setting this up. The only other thing I'm going to do now is select the robot and the shadows and do the same thing again that we did to the background. Go to edit, free transform. We'll just zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna hold shift and scale this down. And I'm just gonna try and position this roughly where I would like it to be. So something like this, and you can see those shadows underneath look pretty cool as well. I can turn those off and on. So they help everything just seem a little bit more believable. But um, there we go. So that's the end of the first lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at adjusting levels, lighting and color balance. And yeah, so I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey there, welcome back to the course. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at levels, lighting and color balance. So we'll jump back into Photoshop now and we'll carry on with our composite. Okay, so this is where we left off. We've actually still got these images open up here. So we can just close these down now. We don't need those anymore. I'm just gonna go to file and save. Save often, just in case something happens. It's always good to save. Now I'm just gonna take my robot and my shadow, maybe move him up 
little bit and just scale him up a tiny bit more so he kind of sits in the middle of the scene. So something like this. There we go. Okay, so that's cool. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my robot layer, go to the bottom of the layers panel and click the adjustment icon. Now we've got a lot of different adjustment layers that we can add here. These are incredibly important in blending the image of our robot with our scene. So first of all, I'm gonna to go to hue and saturation. And what this allows me to do is just bring the saturation down a bit. Now you can see at the moment it's affecting the entire image. That's no good, we want this to only affect the robot. So if we click this icon down here, what this does is you can see it adds an arrow to the layer below and underlines that layer. So this adjustment layer is only affecting the layer below it, which is our robot. So we can adjust the color of the robot without affecting the background. So I could bring this down to like minus 40, minus 39. <laughs> I can click the eye here, turn this off and on, and you can see it just brings a little bit of that blue from the armor out. I could even bring this down a touch more. We'll go for minus 51, there we go. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another adjustment layer. This one is going to be levels. So you can see here, I can adjust the shadows, the midtones and the highlights, and I can just drag this around. Again, we're affecting the entire image, so we just go down to the bottom of this panel and click on the clipping mask icon. Now we're just adjusting the robot alone. So I'm gonna bring this down. He's a little bit, a little bit bright and vibrant for this scene, so I'm just gonna bring the midtones here, and then I'm just gonna grab the whites and just bring those down a little bit as well. Not too far, unless you're going for like black armor or something really cool like that. So maybe just a little bit here. Now, if I turn this off and on, you can see the difference there. We've made that a lot darker. Now, when you're creating composites like this, it's important to understand where the lighting is coming from because where the light is coming from in an image is gonna affect your subject within your scene. So. What we need to do now is we need to add another levels adjustment layer so we can bring back some of the light that you can see coming in from the windows. So we've got our levels one here. We could even name this, let's call it levels darken. I'm going to add another one here. So another levels adjustment layer. Now another way of making this a clipping mask is right clicking and then selecting create clipping mask. And what I'm gonna do is bring the highlights up on this one. And you can adjust the midpoint as well if you want to. Now this is applied on top of our darkened one. So we've kind of undone what, we've, what we started with. But if we actually select the mask for this one and press Command or Control I on the keyboard, what it will do is it will completely hide everything on that adjustment layer. So remember with using masks, black hides white reveals. So I'm just gonna call this Levels Highlights, just so I don't get confused. In fact, it probably makes more sense to call this Shadows instead of Darken. So if I select the Highlights one, I'm gonna grab my brush tool over here, and just pick one of Photoshop's soft round pressure opacity brushes. That is always a mouthful to say that. And make sure that white over here is my foreground color. And then what I can do is where I brush, it will bring back through that levels layer. Now I don't want to do this all over. I'm going to zoom in, just undo what I did there. Make sure the mask is selected, zoom in, and with a smaller brush, just brush around areas. So we have a light source up here. So this does take a lot of practice. And the more you understand about lighting, the easier this is gonna be. So I'm just brushing this along here, get a little bit of glow around the edge there. Maybe the back of the foot and the inside leg. Tiny bit on the chest there. And you can spend a lot longer doing this. We can turn that off and on and you can see it's very subtle, but compositing is all about lots of subtle things that all add up to a much more effective end result. It's all about the big picture. So what I can do now I've done those highlights is I can actually double click on the thumbnail for my shadows and I can make that darker, but you can see how those highlights become even more accentuated. So 
that's the great thing with adjustment layers is you can do like a lot of backwards and forwards, switch between these, I can bring the highlights up even more. And then what I can do is I can actually turn off all of these adjustment layers by clicking the I in the layers panel. You can see we've come quite a long way. That's where we started and we've done this. So um, yeah, we're, we're doing all right. We're doing all right so far. The only problem is we've actually desaturated the blue in the eyes. Now in a later lesson, I'm actually gonna uh, add a glow to these. So I'm just gonna click on that hue and saturation adjustment layer. Now, I want to use black on this because the layer is already white. So you can press X on the keyboard. That's a shortcut key to swap your foreground and background color. So if you're masking and you're using black and white, you can just switch between them. And I'll bring the brush down in size. And then I'm just gonna brush gently over this. Now you can see that I'm doing this with a graphics tablet. You don't have to do it, but it does make it a lot easier because you can control things like pen pressure. So I'm just gently brushing over this, bringing back some of that color that was lost. And I could even do that on the, the shadows layer as well. You can see there, I darkened a lot of it. So I'm just gonna bring that back in because as I say, I will be adding a glow to that in a later video. Okay, so we're nearly done. We've just got one more adjustment layer that we're going to add. So we'll click at the top. We want this right at the top and we'll click the adjustment icon, go to color balance. What we can do here is we can adjust the cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, and blue all within the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So I could make the shadows in my image more blue. I could make the highlights more yellow. This is a very, very powerful adjustment layer. And as I say, it's another one that just makes combining one image with a different image, especially when they've been shot under different lighting conditions, it makes that much, much more seamless. So I'm gonna go with the shadows, maybe bring in a little bit of red. Again, it's adjusting the whole image, so I need to add that clipping mask. With the mid-tones, just a little bit of red. So kind of this, uh, this brick, this orange, reddish, rusted metal, we're kind of bringing some of that onto the subject. Highlights, there we go. So this is all, I'm making very subtle changes here. I don't wanna do anything like that. <laughs> I could do. You could change the entire color of the robot if you wanted, but I am um, just doing something really subtle. So if I turn this off and on, you can see. Subtle, but it really does make a difference. Okay, so there we go. That wraps up the second lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to look at adding some distressed texture to our robot. Okay, so you're back for more. So in this lesson, we're gonna look at taking our robot, adding some distressed texture with some awesome brushes from Envato Elements. So we'll jump into that now and get started. Okie dokie, so this is where we left off. Of course, we're gonna start by going to File and Save. Now what we're gonna do is add some distressed texture to our robot. You can see he is very, very clean, pristine you might say, and our background, well, is a little bit, um, rusted and disheveled. So uh, we need to kind of match our robot with our scene and just rust him up a bit with a bit of texture. Now there's lots of different ways you can apply texture. What I'm going to do is with a brush. So if we click on our robot layer, we can click on the new layer icon from the bottom of the layers panel and it creates a new layer. Now because we created this in between some existing adjustment layers and our robot layer, it automatically just applies that as a clipping mask. And I'm gonna double click this and call this texture. So what I can do is I can pick a color for this texture. I'm going to stick with black and use the brush tool. Now, if you've never installed any brushes in Photoshop before, you can click on this drop down here to get the brush panel up and then go up to the cog, go down to import brushes, and then just navigate to a .abr file. So the brushes that I'm going to use in this course, what I'll do is I'll include those in the course notes. But yeah, any abr file, you just double click that or Go and import it like this and it will bring it into your brushes panel. So you can see in Envato Elements, I've got quite a few here. We're not gonna be using all of them in this course, but we've got a few of my favorites. So distressed texture brushes, we have plenty to choose from. I'm just gonna click on one and you can see if I just click, it adds a bunch of texture. In fact, I'll just make a new layer really quickly so you can see this brush in all its glory. So I can brush in texture like so, and then I could pick maybe a different one. 
and it adds a slightly different texture. And you can resize these brushes like you can with anything. Oh, this one's quite nice. Okay, so we'll go with that. So let's go back to our texture layer. I'm gonna bring the brush size down. You can see it looks something like this. And I'm just gonna click in a few places and just add some texture. You can see literally how easy that was. And you could spend ages doing this. You could, you could, uh, well, we could, we could really mess up our robot here, but uh, he's not, he's not that damaged. He's not that worn down. So I'm going to undo that a little bit. So there we go. We've got some texture. We can turn that off and back on. Now we could leave that as like completely black, but to blend this even more with our, with our robot, our subject, what we can do is change the blending mode from normal to something else. Now overlay and soft light are pretty good. So if I go to soft light and just zoom in. You can see here we've gone from just solid black to then blending that with our robot. And we can even bring the opacity down up here from the top of the layers panel if we wanted to make it a bit more subtle. So I could go for like for 80%. So it depends entirely on what you're going for. Okay, so that wraps up that lesson. A quick look at brushes and how you can use some of them to add texture, some grittiness to an object in your scene. And uh, yeah, so I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Hello, welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at adding some shadows and some glow effects to our robot in our composite. So let's jump back into it. Right here, so this is where we left off. We have our robot and our scene. Now we're going to accentuate the eyes with some glow effects and work on the shadows around the hands and the feet. So first of all, let's do the shadows. So we'll click on our shadows layer. Remember, these are existing shadows that we brought in. We could actually duplicate that layer by pressing Command or Control J and it makes those a bit more pronounced. So that's a pretty quick win. Over here though, we don't really have a shadow. So let's add a new layer from the bottom of the layers panel. And I'm gonna use one of Photoshop's soft round pressure opacity brushes. Now you can adjust the hardness depending on how hard you'd like the edge of your shadow to be. You could go for 100%, which will look um, quite terrible. <laughs> So if I just bring this brush down in size, remember you can adjust the size of your brush using the left and right square brackets on the keyboard. That is a bit too hard. So I'm gonna just go for a hardness of about 30% and you can see it softens the edge considerably. So what I'm gonna do is actually change from a round brush by just bringing this down over here. I can just squash this down and that's just the size of that. And it gives me a much more uh, shadow kind of esque brush. So all of these shadows here are kind of coming over from the right to the left. So now with my brush, I can actually, and this does take a lot of practice, I can just brush in some shadows of my own. And you can spend a lot more time doing this. And then you can use the eraser tool as well if you want to just finesse those shadows. So that's a really, really quick way that you can add some shadows. And I'll just call this layer custom shadows just so I don't get mixed up. I could even add a little bit more, something really soft, just around here, something like that. And then I could bring the opacity down if I wanted to, to like 90%, just so it's not total blackness. But there we go, that's a pretty quick job and it looks pretty effective. So next we're gonna go and add a glow to the eyes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go above all of my other layers because I don't want those color balance and levels and all that affecting what I'm about to do. So I'm putting this right at the top. So I'll create a new adjustment layer and we'll go with solid color. You can do this with a brush, but I'm doing this with a color because, uh, well, I'll show you why in a moment. So I'm gonna go with blue. I can actually hide this and just sample the same color blue here. Maybe bring this up just so it's a bit more punchy. And then remember, click on the layer mask and go Command or Control I and it will hide that completely. And then I can use white. And well, I'm gonna make sure my brush is perfectly round again. So just click on another brush and go back to your soft round pressure opacity brush. I've got my hardness at zero now. And I'm just going to click, make the brush ever so slightly bigger than what you're trying to add the glow to. I'm just gonna click, 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 click. Bit smaller over here, click, 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 click. And then what I can actually do as well is I could change the blending mode to something else. So you get that live preview here. And if I go for a hard light, for example, and just maybe bring the opacity down just a tiny bit, you can see that we very quickly and easily added a glow 
to our robot's eyes. And there we go. So some shadow effects and some glow effects. That was it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so we're back for another lesson. In this lesson, we're going to work on our scene a little bit more. We've done a lot of work on the robot, but we're going to build out our scene with a few more effects for that, just to bring the two elements of our composite together. So we'll jump back into it now and get started. Okie dokie, so this is where we left off. We've got our robot. We've done quite a lot of work actually. And now we're gonna do some work on our scene. So let's collapse our robot folder, expand the scene folder. And first of all, I'm going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. We'll just bring this down a little bit like so. You can just see we're just desaturating a little bit of color from the scene, some of that orange and kind of over here, this sort of teal turquoisey vibrancy. We're just removing some of that. Next, what I'm going to do is add another adjustment layer, levels. We need to darken our scene just to try and make it a bit more moody so it matches some of the shadows and the darker areas on the robot. So I'm gonna bring this down and bring the whites down. We don't have to make it too dark, but you can fine tune these and you can adjust them at any time. So there we go, we've darkened our scene. Now we're also going to add another adjustment there. We've not done this one yet. This is called Color Lookup. Essentially, this enables you to apply a LUT to your image. LUT stands for Lookup Table. Think of it as like a color profile. So we can click on this. Lots to do here. Um, I would play around with all of these. You can literally you can turn night into day uh, with some of these, they're fantastic. But we're gonna go with futuristic bleak. I do like this one. So there we go, it's pretty bleak, a bit too bleak. So I'm gonna just drop that opacity down, make it slightly less bleak. We'll go with, we'll go with about 60%, something like that. But then what I can do is I can actually go back to my robot, go back to that color balance adjustment layer and just maybe adjust this a bit more. So it's not so red. So I'm just kind of trying to balance all of these different adjustment layers so there's much more harmony between my subject and the scene that I'm putting the subject in. So there we go, we've added a few adjustment layers to our scene. We could actually click on these, all of them selected, right click and go create clipping mask, but because they're at the bottom and there's nothing below our scene, it doesn't really matter. But what we're gonna do now is because we have a smart object for our scene, we can apply a blur effect. So if we didn't have this as a smart object that we did at the beginning, applying this blur effect would be permanent. But because it's a smart object, we can actually go up to filter down to blur gallery and select a variety of different blurs. So we'll go with tilt shift. These are quite demanding on the computer as well. So I would recommend disabling preview, unless you've got like a beast of a computer, because every time you make a change, it will update that change and it, it can take a little while. So I'm gonna bring this down. Now what this allows me to do is click like a starting point and then have a blur graduate across a certain distance. So I could have part of this image in focus and as it goes towards the distance, I could then blur it out. So it's really useful for adding some blur effects, some depth of field to a composite. So I'm gonna move this circle down here, this starting point. I want all of this to be in focus because this is around where my subject is. Now you can add multiple points by clicking anywhere else and add multiple blurs that kind of go into the distance, but it can get incredibly complicated. But you can spend a lot longer with this if you want to kind of have a certain type of blur effect. I'm gonna do something pretty simple and I'll turn, I'll turn on preview so you can see what's happening. It might just take a minute to load. So you can see there we have focus here and then it just gradually blurs out towards the distance. So something like this. Now I could add another point at the top. So I have the scaffolding up here a bit more in focus. And as I say, you can add multiple points so you can really try and control that depth of field a bit more. We could add another one and I could rotate it to the side and then maybe add another one over here. My computer's handling this very well. And then just bring that in like so. So you can see I've added multiple blur points. Um, you can spend a lot longer doing this. I'm gonna try and do this really quickly just to kind of show you the technique. So there we go, just bring those out to the edge. So as we move further away from the subject, we're getting more blurry. And if you want to delete one, just select it and press delete 
or backspace. Okay, that'll do for now. You can of course crank up the blur if you want something incredibly dramatic. That, uh, that highlights there how quick a job I've done. But if I bring this down to like seven pixels, it's very, very subtle. So if I turn preview off and back on, you can see it just adds a subtle bit of blur. And then I can go and maybe fine tune this a bit more. I could even get rid of this top one. So something like this, click OK. And you can see it's listed as an effect under here as well. And what I can actually do is double click this and go back and make changes, or I can just drag this effect to the trash down here, let go and it will delete it altogether. So we get that flexibility with smart objects. Now what I'm also gonna do is just go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just add a little bit of blur to the entire scene, just because you know I don't want everything to be too crisp and sharp. So something really subtle, like even maybe just one pixel, it depends on your document size. But you can just see, switching from before we had the blur to after the blur, it just puts a bit more focus on the subject and makes the whole thing look a bit more dramatic and it's the kind of effect you would actually get if this was a photo, you would get some degree of depth of field. Okay, so let's just collapse this down now. So we have our robot. We've done quite a lot of work. As you can see, we've done a bit of work on our scene. We have nothing in our effects folder and that's what we're going to do in the next and final video. We're going to add some effects to really finish off our scene and just make the whole thing a bit more dramatic. So there we go. I'll see you in the next lesson. Hello, welcome back to the final lesson. So we're going to add the finishing touches, some scene effects to our composite in Photoshop. So without further ado, let's just grab this pen and let's jump back into it. Okie dokie. So we're just going to save the document. Now we have our robot, lots of stuff. Our scene, lots of stuff. We can go back and fine tune that, which we might do in a moment, but we have an empty effects folder. So let's add some effects. So first of all, I'm going to click new layer. Just drag this into the effects folder. We'll expand that down and I'm going to call these spotlights. So again, with the brush tool selected, we'll go to the brush panel and we're going to use some more of Envato Elements brushes. So we have fog, Photoshop stamp brushes. Now I love these. You can literally apply fog to a scene in one second. It's black. Let's just press X on the keyboard or just pick white or whatever color fog you'd like from the color picker. Boom, there we go, fog. Literally that easy. End of lesson, just joking. So we can adjust the size. Now you're gonna make sure that uh, your brush covers your scene, but you can add fog literally this quickly. There's lots of different ones here. So I'm just kind of trying a few different ones, seeing how they work and then just undoing if it's not quite right. I might go for this one. I could spend, I could spend hours playing with these brushes. So you can see, I can really kind of choose the position. This one's kind of coming more uh, from the lower half of the scene. And uh, I've just realized that I've named this spotlights. So we're actually doing fog. So there we go. We'll do the fog first. We'll do the spotlights in a moment. So if I go to normal and I can adjust the blending mode. I think I'm probably going to keep keep this as is, but just drop the opacity a little bit like so. So we're just adding a little bit of fog, a bit of mysterious mist to the scene. So we can turn this off and back on. You can see that's, uh, that's incredibly dramatic and put, because this effects folder is right at the top, it's going to affect our subject, like our robot and our scene, everything below it. So we've got some fog. Now we're going to create another new layer. This is the actual spotlight layer. So um, we'll call this spotlights. I promise it'll be spotlights this time. So we've got some more brushes. There we go, fog, spotlights, lots of different ones here. You just click, if I bring it down, you can see the shape. So you could try out loads of different brushes. I'm just gonna keep this really simple and use number one. And what I'm gonna do is just bring this down, left click, and then I can go to edit and free transform and just pull this into position. I can stretch this out of shape. This is really subtle. So I'm just adding some light coming over from the right hand side. And again, with, as with anything, I could change the blending mode. We could go for hard light, for example, and I could bring this just down a little bit so it's not so overpowering. In fact, I'm going to call this spotlight one because I'm actually going to add another one over here on the left one that's a little bit more subtle. 
and you can spend as much time as you like. You could even use a, a different brush and just brush in some light with like a soft feathered brush. You don't have to use spotlights, but let's just bring that down a little bit more. So we'll go with 39% and I'll call this spotlight too. So if I turn everything off, you can see we've gone from a very dark, a very moody image to having a bit of fog. We could turn that down a bit actually, that's incredibly foggy. We'll bring in a spotlight, we'll bring in another light source. So you could spend much more time fine tuning this if you wanted to, but there we go. You can see how quick and easy it is just to use brushes, whether it's fog, spotlights, particles, whatever it is, you can use those brushes to really kind of like add something to your scene. Okay, so we're nearly at the end now. I'm gonna add one more layer. Now I like to add a new layer, we'll call this noise. So using 3D objects is awesome. Using images is awesome, but sometimes they're just a bit too clean, a bit too perfect. If you zoom in loads, you can see here we've got like this robot is like perfectly cut out. So actually, I'm just gonna select the robot, go to filter, down to blur and just select either blur or blur more. What this does is it just very slightly blurs that. You can see we have this listed as a smart filter, just so everything isn't so perfect against the background. Now let's go back up to the new noise layer. What I can do, just select black as your foreground color, go to filter, down to noise and add noise. And it can't do anything because I haven't actually filled this layer with a color yet. So if I just fill this with, we'll go with black, filter, noise, add noise. And you can adjust the amount. You can see here it adds this, which looks terrible. I like to go with Gaussian and monochromatic. So it just kind of removes that color. And what you can do is actually, if you change the blending mode on this to something like overlay or soft light, you can see it looks like that. But if we bring the opacity all the way down to something between, like I find the five and 10% is kind of the sweet spot. And I'll just zoom in so you can see it kind of adds a little bit of that grain that you would get like from a camera, like the noise you would get from a camera photo to the scene. So maybe 5%, let's go with that. Really subtle. So if I turn this off and back on, you can just see it like it adds that level of noise, that little bit of grain to your entire image. So your subject, even if it's a clean 3D image, gets the noise treatment, the background, it just, it's a really subtle detail, even at 5%, but it's something that I like to do to all of my images just in case anyone ever zoomed in. So what we could do is we could actually select the noise layer and just lock that. We don't really want to ever move that. And we can zoom all the way back out, turn our effects off and back on. So you can see they have quite a considerable effect on the overall image. And this is the part really where we can go back and fine tune everything because now I've actually got this effects folder. I'll leave that on. I could go back here, double click on my shadows for the robot make them darker, make them a bit lighter. We've got the highlights over here. So I could accentuate those more. I could even go and add another shadows adjustment layer. So I'll go and add another levels layer. We'll darken this like loads. And then what I'm gonna do is remember, select the layer mask, command or control I to hide everything. And then if I go and grab one of those default round pressure opacity brushes with white. As we brushed in the highlights, I'm now gonna brush in some shadows. And these shadows are gonna be much more accentuated. And as I say, you can spend a lot longer. I'm just doing this like super quick so you can see what I'm doing. Let's brush a little bit round here. A little bit of that there. So there we go, if I just hide all of those layers, got the initial one, we make it darker with some more shadows, we add some highlights, and we could go back, we could fine tune that. Add more highlights. I could play around with this for absolutely hours, but essentially if I just click all of these off, we have our, our scene that we've done a little bit of work to, we've got a robot that we've done a lot of work to, and then we have our effects folder on the top that really finishes off our entire scene. And there we go, that wraps up the course for creative compositing in Adobe Photoshop. So I really hope you enjoyed this. We've gone from robot to industrial image to dramatic lighting effects. We've composited all that together 
into our final design. And if you'd like to follow along and download any of the assets, the brushes, the things we've used throughout this course, then there will be links provided in the course notes. But anyway, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you soon.